Hey guys, in my previous video, I did a review of the 10,000 mAh Mi Power Bank 2. But if 10,000 mAh is not enough for you, and if you need two USB ports, Xiaomi has another power bank, which is the Mi Power Bank 2 20,000 mAh variant. So double the capacity, and you get two USB ports. All right, so inside the retail box, you get the user manual, and I do recommend that you read this user manual because it shows here what these LEDs mean. These LEDs will show you the battery level and the status of the power bank, whether it is in small current discharge or it is in regular mode. So make sure you read this part especially. And it shows you some precautions that you need to take. And obviously you get the power bank and you get a USB cable, which is a micro USB cable. It is not a USB type C cable. But this power bank is capable of charging USB type C devices, no problem. So here we are guys taking a look at the top of the power bank. Here we have two USB out ports and here you can plug in your charging cable to charge up another device, say for example a phone. And it doesn't matter if you plug in a USB Type-C or a micro USB cable, it will charge both the devices no problem. And in the middle we have a micro USB port which you can use to charge the power bank up. We have four status LED indicators. You press this side button to display the amount of power left in the power bank and actually this button performs three functions so the first function is it will display the amount of power left in the power bank and if you have a usb led light from xiaomi like this you plug in this light and you can use the button to turn the light on and off so if you press the button it will turn off and if you press the button again it will turn on and this is not a power button guys, if you're charging a device and you press this button, it will not work the same way as it works with the USB LED light. And lastly, you can use this button to activate small current discharge mode. So all you need to do is double tap the button and the power bank will enter the small current discharge mode. As you can see, these LEDs will flash one after another. And you must turn on the low current discharge mode if you're charging up a low current device like a Bluetooth headset. Otherwise, this power bank goes into sleep mode. So if you're charging up a device which uses less current, uh, you must turn on the small current discharge mode. Otherwise, this power bank goes into sleep. If you want the power bank to run in regular mode, you just press this button once and it will go into regular mode once again. And yes, you can still charge your low current devices in regular mode. It will not cause any damage, but the power bank will go to sleep because the current drawn by these devices is almost negligible. So here we are guys taking a look at the bottom of the power bank and I want you guys to carefully look at the input and output voltage. So this power bank is capable of charging itself at 5 volts 2 amps or 9 volts 2 amps or 12 volts 1.5 amps. So that means this power bank will be able to accept Qualcomm Quick Charge 3 if you use a compatible charger. And if we take a look at the output here also you'll see the output listed at 12 volts 1.5 amps 18 watt maximum. And that means this power bank is capable of dual way quick charge, but you'll need to use a compatible charger to charge this thing up quickly. This is the Sony UCH12 charger and this one supports Qualcomm Quick Charge 3. So I measured the time it took for the power bank to charge up using this quick charger and it took around six and a half hours to charge the battery from zero to 100%. And the cable I used was the USB cable which came with the power bank. If I charge this power bank from 0 to 100 using a 2 amp charger, it takes around 15 to 16 hours. So there is a huge difference of charging time if you use a quick charger versus a regular non-quick charger. So yes guys, I do recommend that you invest in a Qualcomm Quick Charge 3 charger. Otherwise, you'll be spending most of the time charging the power bank up. And just so you guys know the ultra fast charging or the Qualcomm Quick Charge 3 charging works only when you're charging a one single device. But if you are plugged in two devices in both of the USB ports, this power bank will output 5.1 volts at 3.6 amps. Even though this power bank is rated at 20,000 milliamp hours, the actual output capacity is at 14,000 milliamp hours. This one has a 93% conversion rate. This information is at Xiaomi's website. I'll put this link down in the video description. And just so you know the 20,000 milliamp our variant is made out of polycarbonate plastic unlike the 10,000 milliamp hour variant which is made out of anodized aluminum. But nonetheless the plastic feels solid and is a quality product. You can see there is anti-slip coating on the front and the back and just a little size comparison.
and on the front we've got LEDs on both of these power banks and you can see two ports versus a single port on the 10,000 milliamp hour variant if we compare it to the last generation power bank this is the Mi power bank uh, 1 which was the first generation and this is the Mi power bank 2 the size is a little bit smaller so overall the newer power bank is a little bit more compact compared to the previous one but I think the most awesome feature is that the actual capacity of the Mi Power Bank 1 is rated at 12,700 milliamp hours. Meanwhile, the actual capacity of the Mi Power Bank 2 is rated at 14,000 milliamp hours. So yes, the newer power bank is much more energy efficient, outputting 14,000 milliamp hours compared to the 12,700 of the Mi Power Bank 1. And the best part is this is smaller and much more compact. So let's do a charging speed test and see how much these phones are able to charge in one hour. So as you can see the battery level on the Z Ultra is at 9% and the battery level on the Sony Xperia X is at 10% and I'm using identical cables so that we don't get any discrepancy in charging time. So one of the cables came with the 10,000 milliamp hour variant and the other one is from this power bank itself. So let me go ahead and plug both of these phones in. Alright and start the stopwatch. And both of these phones are charging right now. So let's check how much amp is going into the phone. So I've got the Ampere app. So both of these phones are charging at around 1.2 amps or 1.3 amps. You want to take consideration over here. All right, guys, we're at 10 minute mark and let's see how much our batteries have charged up. And as you can see, I did turn the screen off on both of these phones. So let's go to battery usage. The Xperia X is at 20%. Meanwhile, the Xperia X, meanwhile, the Xperia Z Ultra is at 17%. So in about 10 minutes, the Xperia X has gained about 10% charge. Again, minus 10% because already there was 10% charge in the battery. And the Xperia Z Ultra has gained about 9% because this was at 9% battery level and now it's at 18. Let's check the Ampere app and see how much amps we are getting. So one point so 1.4 amps on the big guy and the smaller one is also getting 1.4 amps. Really nice. And again, I'm going to quit everything. Put both of these phones to sleep. All right guys, 20 minutes in, actually 21 minutes in because I forgot to press the record button on the camera. Anyways, 21 minutes in and let's check the battery level. So on the Z Ultra, we are at 25%. And let's check the battery level of the Xperia X. And on the Xperia X, we are at 31%. So actually this one is charging up at 1% per minute. And I think this charging speed is pretty good because it is being charged up from a power bank which is charging two phones at the same time. We are 30 minutes in and let's check the battery level. So on the Z Ultra, we are at 32%. And let's check the Xperia X. Oops. And on the Xperia X, we are at 40%. This is definitely charging faster than this one. But then again, this is a 26, 20 milliamp hour battery and this is a 3000 milliamp hour battery. Interestingly, the power bank is cold to the touch. It is slightly warm over here but rest of the power bank is cool to the touch. So let's minimize this and turn the screen off. It has been 41 minutes since we plugged these devices in. Let's check the battery charge on each of these phones. So the Xperia Z Ultra is at 40%. The Xperia X is at, oops. 
the Xperia X is at 51%. 41 versus 51%. Alright guys, it is 1 hour 20 minutes since we plugged in the phones in the power bank. So let's check the charge level. So the Xperia Z Ultra is at 70% and the Xperia X is at 80%. Again minus 10% so this one charged up up to 70% in about 1 hour 20 minutes. And this one also minus 10% so 60% battery charge on the Xperia Z Ultra and 70% battery charge on the Xperia X in 1 hour 20 minutes. And I think this is pretty darn good because we are charging the phones from a power bank. So you can see the battery level in the power bank has dropped a little bit. You can see these three LEDs are now flashing instead of four. So that means the battery level in the power bank is below 75%. Alright guys, that concludes this video. I hope this video helps you out in purchasing the Xiaomi power bank too. So thank you guys for watching this video and do stay tuned for more videos like these. And I'll see you guys next time.